ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಭಕ್ತಾಯ ತದ ಭಕ್ತಯ ನಮೋ ನಮಃ ಶ್ರೀ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಚೈತನ್ಯ ಪ್ರವನಿತ್ಯಾನಂದ ಶ್ರೀ ಅದ್ವೈತ ಗದಾಧಾ ಶಿವ ಸತಿ ಗೌರ ಭಕ್ತ ಬೃಂದ ಹರೇ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಹರೇ ಕೃಷ್ಣ 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 ಹರೇ 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 ರಾಮ ಹರೇ ರಾಮ 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 ಹರೇ ಹರೇ ಫಸ್ಟ್ ಆಫ್ ಆಲ್ ಆಫ್ ಪ್ರಣಾಮ ಸ್ವಾ ಗುರುದೇವ್ ಓಂ ವಿಷ್ಣು ಪಾಠ ಟಂಡಿ ಸ್ವಾಮಿ ಶ್ರೀ ಭಕ್ತಿ ವೇದಾಂತ ನಾರಾಯಣ ಗೋಸ್ವಾಮಿ ಮಹಾರಾಜ್ ಓಲ್ ಆ ವಿಪನು ಗೋಪಾಲಗ ಓಲ್ ದ ವೌಟೀಸ್ ಥ್ಯಾಂಕ್ ಯು ಫಾರ್ ಕಮಿಂಗ್ Okay, so today is the disappearance of Narahari Seva Vigraha Guru. He was very dear. Hang on this way. This way. Hey, Tulsi Deep. link to I'm giving class right now the link is there on my facebook page and you want to join you can join it's in english so he was very dear to bhakti pragyan kesa goswami very dear so when bhakti pragyan kesa goswami has made his devananda gaudiyamat and in the front gate that is called narahari toran toran means gate right? so if you look through the gate then you can see the deities you can see propad everything so he is teaching us if we have a service mood like narahari then we can have darshan of radha krishna mahapu and the guru parampara so everyone called him seva vigraha and he was the form of service good have said no one param guru dev would say no one ever saw him angry they were so angry yeah. always serving from early morning the small boys because many children their parents would donate them to the temple or they would leave and he would take care of all these children so children means young boys like that but with so much affection so he used to be called the mother of the gaudiya mat because how we can practice spiritual life especially we give up like all material relationships to develop relation with radha krishna so unless we have that type of affection from guru varga always giving so much affection so if that affection that we get is more than affection from wife or parents or children then you can give up that relationship otherwise you cannot so krishna says in gita padadrishti navatate one can only give up the lower thing if he gets a higher taste so only one has more affection for gurudev more affection for vaishnavas than this world then you can give it up Actually, who can give up this world only there's some higher attraction then you can like give up the inferior so great affection he would take care of everyone you know he would cook for them even they would sometimes pass urine in the bed and he would also clean that he would always be cooking good have said param but guru dev said no one ever saw him sleep not like hari wala but this morning in japan no one ever saw him sleep all day he would be doing service then night time he would chant 64 rounds so actually last night we were talking with didi about it <laughs> and he would because very tired so he would tie his sikka to the a, a little nail so when he would sleep then the sikha would pull him awake you know we were talking about another person ishwa chand he was like a learned person he would also stay awake to read while like that way don't sit right in the front you can't write 
So, of course, these people have so much enthusiasm for materialistic activities. At least the same enthusiasm we should try to have for bhajan. Eh? Like I heard one story. One time Einstein was coming out of the cafeteria. Lunch. And he was thinking like that, absorbed in his calculations and physics. Then, because he was not paying attention too much to the environment, then he ran into some person. Then Einstein, his absorption broke. He, then he asked, oh, where am I? Like, and he asked the boy, the student, when I hit you, when we collided, was I coming from the cafeteria or going to the cafeteria? Then the student said, oh, sir, you are going from the cafeteria. He goes, oh, that means I had lunch. <laughs> anyway, so materialists, how much absorbed, right? how hard they work, right? We look at our parents, how hard they worked. Eight hours, 10 hours a day. But someone asked to do half an hour of seva, then we fear. No? So now the Hari Seva Brut was so much ideal Vaishnav in every way. No? Oh, Yuri came again, good. We're just talking about one devotee, no? So, actually Gurudev said when he joined the Mat, then Gurudev was in charge of like purchasing vegetables. Because so many people live in the temple, then the farmers would go past the temple to go to the wholesale markets, you know, carrying on their head or some buffalo cart, donkey cart. Then they would say to the farmers, "Hey, why go to the wholesale market? You sell to us. They would, we would buy. They would buy cheap." So, Guru said those farmers were very unruly like wild persons, mujiks. Then some argument happened with Gurudev and the farmers. Then one Vaishnav who was Gurudev Shiksha Guru, the farmers beat this devotee who was disciple of Saraswati Thakur. Then Gurudev became very angry and with a piece of bamboo, he hit that farmer and knocked him out on the head. And all farmers became angry. They ran away first, then they came back. And then Nada Hari proved because he was pacifying all the farmers, don't be angry. Like with great expertise, he pushed Gurudev in one room and locked the door. And then so, so much affection for all the devotees. So today we remember him. Today was his disappearance. Disappearance means left this world. Disappearance means disappear from our vision. That is called Tirubhav in Sanskrit. Tirubhav means disappearance. Abhirbhav means appearance. Only person have birth and death. But devotees, high class, liberated personalities, we cannot say birth and death. Why? Number one, the soul never takes birth and the soul never dies anyway. And some, someone who's situated in their spiritual, eternal spiritual nature, someone who's realized their soul's eternal form as a servant of Radha Krishna, then how that person will have birth and death? Not possible. Because they're established in their eternal nature. So for someone like that, like Krishna, like his devotees, we do not say birth and death. We say appearance and disappearance. So bhav, tirubhav, means disappearance. Abhirbhav means appearance. So bhav means existence. Something which is existing is called bhav. So whether you see them or not see them, they exist. Like the sun. When the sun rises in the morning, no one says, oh, the sun was born. 
sun was already there, but it made its appearance. And when the sun sets, no one say the sun died. Oh, the sun died. Sun is still there. When it appears or disappears. So with the uh, birth, with the the birth, we got language problem. With the birth and the the death of devotee, we do not say birth and death. We say appearance and disappearance. And this is called Mahotsa festival. If some woman gives birth, we cannot say she's having a festival. So much pain for the mother. Okay, those who gave birth can know that thing. And also, baby is not celebrating too much. Also, how much pain the child feel in the womb, and also when born, how much pain for the child? Like when baby is born, I heard baby's head is like cone because so much force he comes in. So in this world, the appearance is not any festival for the mother or the child. And of course, death, no, no festival for anyone also. When someone dies, how much pain they feel, how much lamentation, because everything they collected in their whole life, they have to leave. So that person is lamenting. Oh, my wife, my children, my business, my properties. Alas, I should have done this differently. Why I did not do this. Lamenting for the past fearful for the future. So in this world, death is no festival. And also, of course, all the people surrounding the dead person, they're also weeping. Actually, good have said when people cry at a funeral, they're not crying for the person who died, they're crying for themselves. Oh, like the husband is, my wife died and he's crying, why? Now who will give me enjoyment? Who will cook for me? Who will clean the house? Who will take care of the children? And the husband dies, and wife also crying. Who will bring in the money? Who will do this? So actually in the funeral, no one crying for the person, they're crying for themselves. No? But the disappearance of a Vaishnava, we call that Mahotsa, festival. Why? Because when they leave this world, where they're going? They're going to the spiritual world, the eternal abode. So that person who's dying, that person who's leaving, he's happy that he was going to the topmost place. And Vaishnava also feel happy. Oh, they know he's going for the Seva Radha Krishna. And also when they remember that Vaishnava, they also feel so much happiness. Of course, in this world, we also feel separation. Like when high class devotee leaves, devotees feel separation. But that separation is not ignorance. That separation gives knowledge, bliss, and purification. Like high class devotee, when they leave, everyone also weeping, but that weeping is not ignorance. That weeping is one form of happiness. Like if someone cries when they're sad, those tears are hot. When someone cries when happy, those tears are very cool. So in disappearance of devotee, we also feel separation, but that is one festival, that is one happiness. That give bliss, that give purification. No. So today we remember not a Hari Seva Vigraha. So of course we could not meet him, but Gurudev would always talk about him, especially this day. There's one beautiful article written by Bhakti Pragyan Kesa Maharaj upon the disappearance of Narahari Seva Vigraha. Maybe we'll try to find it. Today it must come up and I'll put it on my Facebook wall. If you read that, is how much affection he had. Param Guru wrote, my hand is shaking when he's writing this glorification. My hand is shaking, my heart is also shaking. How we can tolerate separation from such a personality. Anyway, today I remember him. Today is also the appearance of Bhakti Vaibhava Puri Maharaj. Okay, so he left like in, I think, 
2009. That time he was like almost a hundred years old. He took Harinam from Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur. So only he met his Gurudev for like a week just before his disappearance. But whole life he followed him. Whole life. Some people whole life with Guru Vaishnava would always forget them. <laughs> and some people only one, two times meet, but whole life can remember because they have that type of, of affection. No? So anyway, so today main topic is Bhagavad Gita. Okay, so we're a little bit talking about third chapter. Okay, so we're talking Krishna discussing with Arjuna action. You may remember last week, Yuri, remember last week? Three types of karma, can you remember for $10,000? What are the three types of action? I certainly hope you don't remember. Karma, akarma, and vikarma, remember? Pious activity, karma. Vikarma, sinful activity, forbidden activity. Vikarma, that which is against karma or proper action. I guess karma you can translate proper acti proper activity. Pious activity. Acting according to Varnashram. We not discussed that too much last week. Also, this also, anyway, so Varnashram, one material arrangement for the development of society and the development of the individual. It not has too much connection with eternal spiritual life. But it's like a foundation. This will regulate the mind and senses of the people in this world. Because if societies and the individual are happy and functioning properly in a regulated manner, then there's easy chance for them to understand higher concepts of spiritual life. Because established in temporary religious principles like in the western countries very hard for people to perfectly practice spiritual life because they have no foundation even they come to spiritual life but they experience many difficulties they cannot stay with one woman or one man therefore so much divorce very hard for most people, even they come to spiritual life, to stay away from all type of intoxications, meat eating, gambling, bad activities. Then the family is not stable. If family is not stable, then how children can get proper impressions, proper cultivation, proper example, then all society is destroyed. So Vanashram is a system which gives a foundation for eternal spiritual life. Like we said, if you do ABC nicely, then easily you can do XYZ. If you can understand one plus one is two, two plus two is four, then on that foundation you can easily understand quantum physics or anything like that. So Bhaktivinoda no Thakur says, no, in those countries where there is no practice of Varna Ashram, very difficult for those persons to catch Niti Dharma or service to Krishna, because no foundation. Anyway, so a little bit we can talk about it, just five minutes, this is not the main topic of today's class. There's something should be there for the development of society and something should also be there for the personal development of the individual within society. If all the individuals are nicely situated, 
then society develop. Yeah. So first we can talk about the individual. That is called Varna. I think last week we did talk about it just a bit. The four Varnas. Yes, we talked about it last week, didn't we? The Brahmana Chatya of Aisha Sud, four natures of people. Those inclined to spiritual life, who find happiness in study of the scripture, worship, cultivation of non material activities. They feel happy by controlling the mind and senses. That is the Brahmanas. They have 12 qualities. Maybe we can, anyway, have to, in Jaiva Dharma, all these things are given. The 12 Brahminical qualities. We can take our own pulse and see how many of them we're developing. Then there are those inclined towards martial activity. Military action, militarily inclined, the soldats, those inclined towards business, and those who just want to work for others. Chat, Brahman, Chatya, Vaishya, Sudra. This is for the individual. So everyone has one of these four natures. So in the Vedic culture, when the child is like nine or ten, then the guru, the parents, experienced persons, they look at what is the nature of this child. Does the child run around all day making machine gun noises? Then here's chapter. Does he like meditation and yoga and all these things? Then he's Brahman. Does he like just working with his hands? Then Sudra. What else? Vaisha, maybe they like business. Like some children at the age of nine or ten selling lemonade, ladus. Then this is Vaisha. What is the nature of this child? Oh, this child has this type of nature, then give him this type of education. The child something studies, the child is studying something they like. They have taste, they have interest. Then they'll be happy. Then they can earn their livelihood doing something they like. Their whole life they feel happy. Maybe their artistic nature. I heard one story. There was one small girl who was always moving like this. Could not stay still in class. So they kicked her out of this school, this school. And one teacher was looking at this child, always like she was always moving. And some they wanted to kick her out of class. She cannot pay attention in class. Then this, luckily this teacher said, they put her in one room and they said, just watch this girl. And she was starting to dance. And they said, this child is a, is a dancer by nature. So they put her in ballet school. She became like you know, the head, head of some, I think it was Russian, something Russian, some Eastern European country. She became in charge, she became like world famous ballet dancer. This is just one example. So anyway, one should act according to one's nature. And the Vedic scriptures give so much encouragement in that. One should earn one's living in a proper manner. That is called karma. So that is for the development of the individual. But also, no man is an island. Translate that into Russian. No man can be an island just alone. Right, Mekala? No one can be an island. We are social beings. 
So, as an individual, I also have some relation with society. So for the for the smooth running of society, there's also four divisions of social life. Student, you know, when the child's studying, that time should be celibate. These days, all boys and girls having girlfriends at 12, 13, 14. And how they're followed, how they concentrate on their studies when they're chasing after sex life at such a young age. And if the girl or boy has so many boyfriends or girlfriends, how they'll stay in one marriage, then everything will be finished. So student life, one division. When the child completes their studies, then maybe they want to marry, then they can enter the second stage, Grihasta. The time the child is mature, no, the man and the woman, the girl also, both know their roles, responsible. So one should then marry, not like being a dog in the street. Then children born in steady families, parents giving good example. So one should maintain one's children. One should look after one's old parents, as well as you know, poor persons, disabled persons. The Grihastra Ashram gives shelter to all this. But one should not stay in this life forever. When children are grown up, Right, Yuri? Children are now old. No need to spend whole life absorbed in that. And there's Vaisha. Uh, what is next? Vandaprast. Means when children are mature, maybe children are now married and doing business. Then husband and wife should little be separate from the family. Means the man retires from business or whatever. The wife also follows him. They also give more time for spiritual life. Maybe visiting the holy places or going for saintly, saintly association. Gradually detaching oneself. That is the third stage of life, Vandaprast. Didn't want to talk about this. And then finally, when one fully renounces all materialistic activities, then sannyas. So following this is called karma. But this is not this is not ex perfect. This will not give full perfection. Because still no remembrance of Krishna is there. What's the use of being a perfect wife or perfect mother, perfect child, perfect husband? perfect businessman, perfect worker, there's still no remembrance of Krishna. So it said, Chana Vanashram Kodi Jadi Krishna Nahibhaji Se Jana Narvoda Janakamad. One follows perfectly one's all material responsibilities, but still no service to Krishna. It says, still they go to hell. <laughs> They go to hell. <laughs> so in Bhagavad Gita, Arjuna is in this situation because his Dharma, according to his Vanasra, was to be his nature was to be a soldier, a king. A king means what? Protect the population, protect, protect the citizens. So king must fight. If some bad persons attack the kingdom, then the king has responsibility like father, fight. So Arjuna is in this situation according to his religious principles, 
means his material position in Varnashram, he is forced to fight. But Arjuna also is very soft-hearted. And the opposition army, are his cousin brothers, cousin brother, hundred, a hundred cousin brothers. That is the Kurus and one girl was there also. But she was not fighting, of course. So cousin brother means like everyone knows what a cousin is, right? <laughs> Your father's brother, his children, cousins. So these are like own brothers, own sisters. So Arjuna has to fight them. Kill and fight it means kill them. Also, there is the his own guru is on the other side, all his uncles, relatives, friends. Many people also did not want to fight against Arjuna, but were cheated or trapped by Duryodhan. Many, many things were there. So Arjuna's heart was full of compassion. He thought, why should I fight? Okay, this is my dharma to fight. But also there are many other considerations Arjuna was thinking. Why kings fight? To protect the citizens. But Arjuna thinking, now I'm those persons I should be, by being a king, I will serve the people. But now for the kingdom, I will have to kill all these people. That is irreligious. And Arjuna also you see in first and second chapter of Bhagavad Gita. Arjuna will kill these men. But these men are also fathers. Children, sons, grandfathers. So I kill these men, then what will happen to all their wives? If wife has protection of no husband, then many lusty men can come. Then those women will be just their religious, their religious nature will be destroyed. And the children from those family was all also be unregulated children, improper, improperly conceived. So all the children will be spoiled because no father. And who will be responsible for all this destruction of the women, destruction of society? Women have such an important place. Number one, we all come from women. All of us owe our lives to our mothers. Right? So mother is first guru. You see children, 95% of the time with mother. Until like, until what? Ten or something. So mother is first guru. Children learn everything mostly through from mother. So the women are destroyed, polluted, contaminated. Then all society is destroyed. So I do not give many arguments. I will be the cause of the destruction of my relatives. I will be the cause of the destruction of their families. And once the family is destroyed, this becomes parampara. Those children spoil, their children will be spoiled, their children will be spoiled. So Arjuna says, I will be the cause of destruction of the entire society. Like you see, a woman who gives up her husband, or husband dies, then she goes from this man to this man to this man. And all the children, right? We travel a lot, sometimes you meet. Some woman has like three children from four children, five children, all from different fathers. Father's Day becomes so chaotic, you know? Father's Day. So Arjuna can see all these things. Also Arjuna by nature is very compassionate, very kind. 
So just from that I will become king, I will kill all these people, that is not good. No, so I do give many, many arguments. Many arguments. Also, so Arjuna finally said, I should give up my karma to be a soldier, my duty of, I should give that up and just become a beggar. Better I maintain myself by begging than maintain myself by being a king and killing all these people. So in the first chapter of Bhagavad Gita, then these three options are given. Karma, following one's prescribed nature, prescribed action. Actually, this is called fruitive activity, karma. Why? Because the fruit, the result of doing all these things perfectly, the result is going to the heavenly planets. The result of dharma means wealth will come. The result of dharma means fulfillment of all desires. And ultimately liberation. Dharma, arta, karma, moksha. Especially dharma, arta and karma, especially. Religiosity, economic development, sense gratification. This is called Trivarada, the three paths of the Vedas. Mostly, so the result of following this Varnashram system is one who gets all enjoyment in this world, fulfills all desires in this world, and after death also get so much enjoyment in the next life. One goes to the heavenly planets, enjoys so much there. And next life again, born in a wealthy religious family. So most, this is called karma kam. This is like a chain. If you read Bhaktivinoda Thakur's Jayavadama, he talk about this chain, cause and effect. One karma leads to fulfillment of more desires. Right? You do karma perfectly, then you get so much in this world. Then you have more facility, right? Then you make, then you marry and make children. For example, this produces another link in the chain. So one thing produces another thing. So this is called trivarada. So Krishna says, mostly the Vedas discuss this. Because what everyone wants, enjoyment in this life and enjoyment in the next life. Right? If you start talking to people about <laughs> give up meat, give up fish, give up eggs, give up alcohol, give up sex life, chant the holy names, control the senses. 95% of people just run. 99. They just run. Because so much thirst for enjoyment. So much desire. So Varnashram is the system by which you can fulfill your desires. Without, without becoming degraded. As a result of that, you enjoy more. And next life you also enjoy. So most people are absorbed in that. Enjoy this life and then enjoy the next life. So most people are interested in Dharma and Karma, but amongst them very few will be interested in the concept of liberation. They cannot imagine a life without enjoyment, material enjoyment. So even people practice some religious life in this world, their goal is more enjoyment. In the heavenly planets, how much enjoyment is there? 
you can read, read descriptions are there in Mahabharata and other places. Shouldn't read too much, otherwise maybe you become attractive. But these descriptions are given in the scriptures to encourage people to practice some dharma in this world. Okay, this world you only get one wife. Maybe she's ugly. Maybe she doesn't speak very nicely. But stay with her because this is a religious principle. The next life you get, you know, 50 wives or 100 wives or 1,000 wives in the celestial planets. Give some donation in this world. Nobody likes to give donation. Because giving money is like giving blood. Gorgma is just to say. To give blood is not so difficult, but to give donation, that is difficult. So scripture encourage give donation. Give a little bit. Give something. So scriptures describe so much what is the result of giving charity. Give a little bit and next life you enjoy so much. Give some grains, some foodstuffs in this world. Is it meant to be introductory class? Is it meant to be Bhagavad Gita, introductory class? Therefore we're speaking all these things. So give charity. The next life you can you'll enjoy so much in the celestial worlds. And the life when you if you take birth again on earth, you'll also enjoy so much. So in this way, the the Vedic scriptures encourage everyone in this process of karma. This life you can be, be happy and fulfill all desires. And of course, next life you'll enjoy more. For example, if one has children, if you properly, if the girl is kept without being with any man, then you marry her, then the father and mother get so much pious benefit from that. If they give a virgin girl in marriage, a virgin daughter in marriage, and then the father and mother get so much benefit from that, materialistic benefit, so much to critique. It was difficult to protect children especially these days but you do you get so much better and the girl of course gets so much better so scriptures full of these type of activities so much pushing this Vanashram Dharma Dharma you see the foundation but perfectly following all these things will not give liberation from birth and death It will give material enjoyment, material happiness. But this is also one type of bondage. So in Bhagavad Gita, Krishna says, these descriptions of the result of fruitive activity, these are like flowers. The scriptures like a tree. And all these descriptions are like flowers. Even Bhagavad Gita, Krishna talks so much. The hymns of the Vedas, these are like twigs, branches. If you give this charity, you get this result. If you perform this pious activity in this world, you get this result. If you want good children, worship the forefathers, the pitras. If you want a good wife, worship. If you want a good husband, worship Shiva. I forget, I should have. Anyway, these scriptures just full of these type of things. Give charity to a Brahmin, give foodstuffs, give umbrellas, give cloth, give cows, give land. The result? Then comes Arta, wealth will come. And then when you have wealth, you can fulfill all desires. So Dharma, Arta, 
So mostly people, Krishna says in Bhagavad Gita, if the Vedas are like a tree, then the hymns of the Vedas, these are like sticks, branches, leaves. And the hymns of the Rig Veda, especially some Veda, are what? These are describing what, do this charity, do this pious activity, worship this demigod. And the flower are the results of these activities. So Krishna said, bewildered by the flowery words of the Vedas. The flowery words. Krishna says. If the Vedas are a tree and all the hymns of the Vedas are twigs and leaves and branches. Hymns, hymns, songs, verses. This is all Bhagavad Gita. No? Krishna gives so much knowledge in Gita. No? Then the result of these activities are like the flowers. Like the bee busy all day around the flower. So Krishna said, bewildered by the flowery words of the Vedas. Those persons, bewild the bewildered persons, think there's nothing more than this. Like in Islam and Christianity, want to speak of Ved Vedic, those who follow the Vedic system. All this idea of reward, reward and punishment, the result of doing this, you get enjoyment. And if you don't do it, you go to hell. You do what? So karma and become nothing more. If you talk to any of these persons about liberation from this thing, they cannot even imagine such a thing. Therefore, those who follow Dharma and Karma are numerous. But those who are interested in moksha, liberation, very few. Because explain to people there is a good state of the soul which there is, a, there is a position where the soul is free from material body, free from birth and death, free from hunger and thirst. And people will get up and walk out the door. I mean, what's the use in such topics? They cannot imagine a life without a material body. No, this body give all enjoyment. Without a body, how could you enjoy it? I remember when I was in year seven in school, and teacher said, there is a group of Christians, and if God said to them, die and come to me now, they would immediately kill themselves and go to heaven. I remember I was shocked when I heard that. Would I do that? God said, kill yourself and come to heaven. Who would do it? People cannot imagine a life without a material body. So mostly people are interested in all this. So Krishna says, What is it? Veda Trigun of Visay. Krishna says, Mostly the Vedas deal with all this subject matter, the modes of nature. But nice Triguna Baba Arjuna. But Arjuna, you should become beyond this. Tasman Bab Yogi Arjuna, you should become a yogi. Free from all these things. That's why the scriptures dealing with Dharma, Art, and Kam, people too much interested in. Them. If the scriptures dealing with liberation, very few people are interested in that. And if you talk about the essence of liberation, what does the soul do after liberation? Yuri, what does the soul do after liberation? 
How many times I told you? You always forget. If you talk about people, what happens after liberation, then who will understand that? Even less. That's why you give people like Bhagavad Gita. People read, cannot understand. Just talking about a higher subject matter. So, anyway, why I'm speaking all these things? So, Krishna talks about karma. Vikara means the forbidden activity, sinful activity, that which is against karma. Like to marry, for example, this is Vanashram, this is karma. But to give up marriage and go with another man or another woman, this is vikarma, sinful activity. Right, for example, so where there's karma, there must be vikarma. Where there's dharma, there must be adharma. Irreligion. So karma, that which is opposite of karma is called vikarma. And non-performance of karma is called akarma, non-action. So Arjuna suggested non-action, akarma. I will live my life by begging rather than perform my karma. Maybe some woman is thinking, my children give me so much trouble, I will leave them all and go to the forest. Or some man is thinking, my wife is very troublesome, <laughs> I'm tired of work. People do, they give up and re retire artificially. This is called a karma, non-performance of karma. So all three have some fault. Because karma gives repeated Birth and death. Vikaru means go to hell. Pidivad. <laughs> so by following karma, you take birth in an elevated position. But you still have to take birth. Vikaru means you've been born, you become degraded, but you also have to take birth again as a worm, as an insect, as a Russian tree. All the poor trees in Russia, in the middle of winter, a dog in Russia. <laughs> so you also have to take birth. So karma and vikarma are both the cause of birth and death. Can I escape from this by not doing any karma? A karma? That is impossible. Because no one can be free from karma. Breathing is also an activity. Digestion is going on. Eating, even sleeping is an activity. Understand, Yuri? Hope when you come to India, you must come to Vrindavan, okay? March, if you're here on March 7, make sure you're here before March 7. There's big festival here in Vrindavan. Big, holy. If you get a chance, you come one time, okay? So, how one can become free from these three? These three options all are imperfect. Even if you perfectly follow your karma, that is also not give any freedom from birth and death. So, karma, vikarma, and akarma all have fault. No? So, in chapter 3, Krishna is discussing action. Right? That's why chapter 3 is the 18 chapters of Bhagavad Gita. Each chapter is one yoga. Right? So chapter 3 is called Nita Trangani. Huh? Karma Yoga. The science of action. So Krishna says one should perform one's duty without attachment. Huh? By the result of one's action, one give to Krishna. Oh my God, is that one hour already? 
Well, no, I didn't even talk about anything. We just talked about what is bad. We didn't talk about too much about what is good. And unless you know these things are bad, you cannot give them up. No? So Upanishad we'll, we'll says so the study of darkness and the study of light are like the same thing. It's Upanishad discourse. Sometimes devotee Bhagavatam also so much described the futility of material existence. Right, right Miss Eugene, Rukmini, why I should not marry again? Bhagavatam describe all the suffering which comes with it. It's also, you know, the negative sense. <laughs> this is also encouraging for spiritual life. Why I should not go down that path? It's also helping in devotion. Especially, you see the instructions of Prahlad Maharaj against family life and all these. You read that, my God, he's coming from a five year old child. Sometimes, negative side also helps. Negative is bad and positive is good. Both things we have to hear. In this class, we didn't hear anything good, just negative. Only negative is discussed. Today is no positive. Sometimes we need some encouragement to do the positive thing. This thing is bad. Give it up. So, Krishna is talking in Bhagavad Gita. So, Arjuna, don't give up your karma. Because that nature is there. As long as you have a body, that nature will be there. Even if you go to the forest and become a beggar, your nature will go with you. Like someone says, I should leave this temple. The problem is, you leave, you take your problems with you. Same mind, same senses go with you. <laughs> I, I will go away from him. The problem is, you go, but everything goes with you. You say, I leave the temple. But what do you leave? Nothing, because everything you take with you, no? all your problems, all your past activities, all your nature, your habits, good and bad, everything you go with you. No? So what are you leaving? No. So Arjuna, Krishna says, even if you say, I leave and go and become a beggar, but the problem is your nature goes with you. One cannot give up one's nature. Especially as long as you have a body, nature will be there. No? Krishna says in Gita, no? Even the sage, even the liberated soul still have nature. Like sometimes in Vaishnava we see, according to their past, some nature is still there. But this cannot affect them. But it's still there. But we should not give importance to it. Like Rupa Goswami said, no? Like in the Ganga, there's bubbles, mud, pollution, even dead bodies. I remember the first time I went to the Ganga, I went to take bath. And I, <laughs> I remember, it was near Patna. Then I saw a floating, something was floating and some crows were eating. And I was going, I was very young, and I was going, what is that? Is that what I think it is? Because just came from Australia. Couldn't imagine you'll see a dead body with crows eating. I mean, that was magic. I mean, what is that? How is that even possible? I mean, but Ganga is Ganga. So I still took bath. These things cannot affect the Ganga. Pollution, dead bodies. Cannot affect. Like in the rainy season, the Ganga is full of mud from the Himalaya, bubbles, foam. But it cannot affect the transitional nature of the Ganga. Still you take bath and think I am purified. So even the high class personality, nature is still there. Good nature means this body is made of that. But it cannot affect them. It's still there, but it doesn't affect them like mubbles, mubbles, 
mud and bubbles in the Ganga. A new word today, bubbles. So Krishna teaching us in third chapter, as long as you have this body, you will have a nature. What should you do? By following this Dharak Varnashram, following this, your nature, one can still achieve perfection by offering the results of your actions to Krishna. Therefore, whether one is a Brahman, a Chatya, a Vaishya, or a Sudra, whether one is a student, married, renounced, or sannyas, all can achieve perfection by the simple action of offering the result to Krishna. Offering the result. Okay. So this is Bhagavad Gita, third chapter. So Krishna says to Arjuna, do not encourage ignorant people to give up action. You see, it's third chapter, verse 25. Oh, descendant of Bharat. Bharat is a name of India also. Bharat. Bharat means effulgence. Light. Rata means to be absorbed. Those who are absorbed in knowledge, they are residents of Bharat. Now we call India. So Chivikumash is an Indian who is not performing devotion. They are not actual residents of Bharat. He used to say, who is an Indian? Chivikumash would give lectures. Who is an Indian? Those who have no devotion to Krishna, they are not actual Indians. He would say like that. So, or descendant of Bharat, Krishna said. Ignorant people perform their duties with attachment. But those who are wise should also work, but without attachment. Huh? What? Take it. Five minutes after. Desiring to instruct the people in general. Those who are wise should also work but without attachment in strict desiring to instruct people in general. A person who is learned in the path of spiritual advancement through knowledge should not bewilder the intelligence of ignorant people by instructing them to give up their prescribed duties. Rather, by properly performing his own actions in a composed and detached manner, he should give example. Okay, so, Krishna then, we were talking last week. Arjuna, you should, even though you have perfect knowledge, you should still act in this manner. Why? To give example to the common persons, to give example. Then Krishna also gave himself as an example. Krishna performing all activities also, but without attachment. So all aspects of verse 27, prakriti kriyamana guna karmani sarvasa. So everything in this world is performed by material nature, but the soul is not doing anything. No? So we'll talk about that next week. Maybe we'll change the time because every day we have bhajans here at 8 o'clock. So maybe we'll find another time for this. Okay, everyone, any questions? Take care. Bhagavad Gita ki jai. Hare Krishna. Okay, Hare Ball. Thank you. Hare Krishna.